uh, welcome to our sixth AMA. We have it every other Friday, where we invite interesting protocols, partners, and projects who have something to offer to Dow Treasury ecosystem. And this week, we have invited Shreyas, who is the co-founder, and Dow Shepherd from Lama. From our side, we have growth lead Patrick, who will lead the conversation. And to all the listeners who have questions to us, just send me the request so that I, I can add you as a speaker. Thank you. Oh. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, I was just saying that we, we had just a few people so far, but last couple of weeks ago, we had, I think, 30 on the Lido call. But then over the next couple of days, around 700 people or so uh, listened in. I was pretty happy about that. So hopefully um, uh, something similar will happen here. Um, as Sukanshi said, we have Shriyas from Lama. I think it's going to be a really interesting discussion. To date, we've been focused more on specific uh uh, protocols or solutions within Dow Treasury Management. But today, we hope to step back a bit and get the bigger picture about the space, uh, what's happening uh, in some other areas. In fact, what we'd like to do is uh, talk a little bit about Llama. Um, so I'm kind of curious how that all started. Uh, what are best practices for Dow Treasuries? Llama can help us understand that understand what the state of the Dow Treasury market is today, just in general, at least what, what Lama sees on the market. And then maybe uh, go back into the into best practices and do a little bit deeper dive in a couple of areas. I think diversification will probably be one. It's a huge topic. We hear it a lot when we're talking to, to different people. And I'd also like to pick uh, uh, Shrias's brain on uh, managing the treasury you know how do people fit into all this and what do they what do they see what do they recommend and if there's any time left maybe hear a couple of success stories just to kind of give some specific examples of of some of the things we'll be talking about uh how they have just uh played out in practice because llama has been uh, very involved with a lot of well-known protocols so i'd love to hear that so um as you kind of mentioned this is recorded we'll have the recording later and uh, I'm going to ask some questions in the beginning, but then we're certainly going to open it up. So if you have questions, please just, I think you need to raise your hand and, and Sukanshi will, will make sure you can, you can ask. We have, uh, it'll be a one hour discussion and we have a hard stop. So we will finish up um, in one hour. So with that, um, Shriyas again, welcome. Thanks, thanks for coming on. Great. Uh, thanks, Patrick, and great to be here. Um, I'm happy to give a little bit of introduction to myself and Dama, and then, um, you know, chat about the state of uh, DAO treasuries. So um, Lama is building economic infrastructure for DAOs. What that means specifically is that we're building a layer on top of DeFi protocols that help DAOs allocate their treasuries effectively and uh, assess results of um, how those allocations have gone. And we are quite community first, and so we have a group of 40 DeFi specialists as Lama contributors um, who have basically, you know, done work that involves proposing and designing treasury strategies, designing liquidity incentive programs, working on on-chain indices, uh, building financial reports and uh, doing uh, analytics, uh, like on Dune analytics. And right now we're sort of working on what the generalizable solutions look like now. Um, and so uh, you know, we've, we've sort of narrowed down key areas to, to focus on and um, and one of them being the treasury diversification problem, given that, you know, DAOs have, um, you know, large pools of native tokens and uh, they need to diversify into, into stable coins just to cover two to four years of operating expenses, given the volatility of native tokens. And so we're focusing on that problem and, and helping solve that in a, in a DAO DeFi native way, building on some existing DeFi protocols. But... Um, but yeah, I can get into that a little bit later. Uh, but but so far, what you know, our, our work has has been, um, you know, working with Aave, Uniswap, Gitcoin, Pool Together, Fay Protocol, um, and and a bunch of others on on um, sort of developing these treasury strategies and help them having them allocate uh, their their capital effectively and and monitor how that's going. I think um, we're, we're sort of in a very interesting place and. In, of, of time in DAOs now because um, uh, I, I think DeFi for DAOs is how I'd describe what Lama is sort of focusing on. And DeFi for DAOs is characteristically different from 
normal DeFi, where, where of course there are some similarities, but um, we think of Llama as, you know, we think of these DeFi protocols as relatively unopinionated and Llama building these opinionated actions um, on top of DeFi protocols for DAOs to take, you know, an action like a stable kind diversification, which they can do, say, via bond issuance or via an auction mechanism or, um, uh, you know, or, or, or sort of via fixed trade loan. And um, these DeFi protocols, you know, there's, there's sort of more protocols that, that um, have... Uh, sort of a broader use case, but but kind of need um, this this tailored um, uh, sort of workflow on top of them, as well as uh, setting of key parameters and and um, and you know making sure those those can be tweaked by a community of experts, uh, and and so we're seeing that need more now, and and we're sort of focusing on that. Um, but yeah, uh, happy to sort of take questions generally on on, on DAOs and treasuries are our, our specific work. How did the, I'm kind of fascinated because for us, treasury management, obviously with CoinShip, it's where we focus. We provide tooling in that space. So we're very well um, Basically, everything you've, you've, you've put out, um, um, hopefully, I can talk in more detail about a few things. Um, but I'm curious because what, what kind of, you know, you're one of the founders of Llama. What was really the kind of the thought process there when you started it? It said, this is something that, that needs to be done. I'm just kind of, yeah, kind of curious how you kind of came to them. Yeah, so I was previously, um, uh, you know, I, I, I sort of left a, a traditional job and I wanted to do something in crypto. I was exploring the, you know, broad crypto landscape. I was, you know, quite passionate about ideas of decentralization and open source and programmability. I was very interested in, I, I was sort of lurking or semi-involved in a bunch of communities um, and, and DAOs either on governance forums or on, on their discords. And there was something really interesting happening there. And I, I thought that, that these decentralized entities could be a really important coordinating force. And I discovered that, you know, when I was participating in these governance forums, there were these treasuries um, that were, you know, almost a shared property owned by this community that um, was a really important resource. Uh, that you know, it's almost like if Google or Stripe opened up their balance sheet and asked a community to to decide how that's going to be spent and allocated, and so it's quite a significant thing. Uh, and not just Google or Stripe open up their balance sheet, but the fact that the balance sheet is kind of denominated in 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 tokens, uh, like almost currency of the DAO, right? Um, and, you know, native tokens in this case. And so, so it was a very interesting problem. Like I, I uh, actually initially kind of reached out to a bunch of people. Um, uh, to, to ask them questions and how they were dealing with their treasuries. And it, this was uh, October 2020. And it, it just felt like uh, there was just very little attention paid in the space. Like I had a lot of detailed questions. People would ask me back the same questions and ask me um, for just advice on, on how to you know, deal with these um, large pools of, of um, native tokens. And so, yeah, I um, actually initially worked on kind of building this um, treasury uh, dashboard where you can categorize transactions and see what's happening with, with your treasury. I quickly realized um, because of, of the market maturity of DAOs, uh, the most pressing problem was kind of what, you know, how DAOs should actually um, structure their treasuries, what they should do with, um, you know, what they should do with this capital, what processes and systems need to be there. And and kind of the, the, the tooling and the, the, the products um, need to be used by experts, uh, and, and the experts didn't exist yet. And and so we sort of started actually community first, where initially it was kind of me for, for a few months, that was Lama, uh, that was, you know, doing these proposals where I, I didn't have any connections in space, but I just reached out, uh, called in these governance forums, or would or would, um, would message people, and, uh, and yeah, ended up, you know, working on this treasury diversification strategy for Uniswap, worked on some projects for Aave, and uh, slowly um, I reached out to anyone who uh, was in the DAO space that I thought was was really keen, sharp DeFi mind, and and after I chat with them, was sort of aligned on values and and you know built this community of Llama contributors that you know consisted of some of the the best DAO contributors in the space, and and we worked very sort of um, you know focused on on the treasury problem, uh, and uh, and we were quite intentional about growing. Um, you know, the, there's a um, the, one of the founders of Coordinate has this quote that DAO should grow with the speed of trust, and I, I kind of like that because 
uh, th that's definitely where we followed the Lama, where we didn't grow too quickly um, in terms of of the uh, of, of the DAO. Like we um, grew at, at at a speed that was intentional, where people could you know work on these projects like with Aave or Gitcoin and Uniswap together and really have each other's backs and fully trust each other and, and do really high quality work. Um, and I think now, uh, so, so what I, I think was clear from the beginning was I wanted to work on DAOs. Uh, I remember the few engineers that approached me early on that, you know, said, Hey, like we'll join if you, if you kind of, you know, build for the uh, company treasuries. And I just said, I'm un uninterested in that. Uh, I was sort of both interested in DAOs from a like value standpoint, um, in, in the ideas of kind of decentralization and, and open source and pro programmability, but also from a, also from a you know market standpoint, like it felt like you know, DAOs are going to grow, DAO treasuries are going to grow. So I think the first clarity was was on DAOs. The second clarity was on treasuries, like that that specific focus. Um, and the third was kind of you know we want to eventually build a scalable product, but we start kind of community first. And so uh, th those things I think stuck around. And and I think uh, but but the specific tweaks of of how we got to where we are, like have you know that that journey has evolved. Um, and I think now the the market's at a point where you know I, I think it's there is sufficient market maturity in the DAO space where um, partly due to some of the contributors that we've seeded, where I think, um, you know, products that we can build uh, can, can actually actually be used by by expert contributors. And and we're sort of seeding the initial usage with, with uh, the Llama community. And so you can think of the Llama community as this lab for what to build in, in DeFi and DAOs. And um, they will be the initial users of, of some of the... Um, uh, smart contracts and interfaces we build, um, but uh, but yeah, you need these initial users, right? Because if you're trying to do something like a convertible bond issuance, um, it's not like the average, um, say, Gitcoin contributor uh, is going to you know set those parameters and find the relevant buyers and execute on that. Um, so Llama is kind of evolving into this, I would say, um, uh, for lack of a better analogy, kind of a really software powered. Um, uh, in, investment bank for DAOs, where there's you know an open architecture, there's you know software really uh, at the heart of it. Uh, there's a community; it, it's sort of community owned, and and there's an expert community kind of uh, enabling these actions and executing, say, um, a treasury diversification with a with an auction mechanism or something. Uh, there's there's a community kind of building these strategies for you know post diversification. Say you deploy into low yield to medium yield to high yield indices and then there's there's um there's working with different projects uh and so we we see see ourselves as an important connective tissue in the in the DAO ecosystem and so you know we'd work with projects like uh yeah like uma protocol porter finance any of these other DeFi protocols building interesting primitives with you know sort of payment solutions like like uh coin shift like we're, we're sort of very open to um working with different players in the stack um and not rebuilding the novel primitives from scratch but Instead, actually helping these players get distribution where where needed, um, but but focusing on the part that kind of we're good at, which is um, which is the execution of of the treasury function with the DAO and uh, and and connecting the relevant relevant primitives for a specific action. Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of it is it's treasury management, and and obviously there's a technical component of that. You mentioned already some things you know that are very important when you manage a treasury. There's no doubt about it. But the second component is just that is managing the DAO and managing the people. And it does seem like the treasury function was probably going to be one of the first ones to be developed out from a DAO perspective, because you have to pay people, you have to invest your money. Um, maybe you know, there's a lot of important um, components within any DAO, but the treasury is probably one of the most important. So it, it's, I guess it's not surprising that would be one of the first areas to really become a little bit more, I guess, professional in its, in its management, if you will, um, just because of the need. The... Yeah, exactly. I think, I think the, um, yeah, the, I would almost phrase it as, uh, you know, there's, there's three main things that, you know, if you think about the large protocol does, which is the ones we focus on, uh, there's three main things that on-chain governance enables. One is um, protocol upgrades. Uh, the, the second is asset listings, like on RB, it's sort of listing curve finance as an asset. And, and the third is treasury actions. And the treasury is this shared resource that this community of token holders gets to decide how it's being used. And that is a very, very critical function of, of governance. And I think it's still extremely undervalued. Um, 
even though there's attention in treasuries, I think, uh, I think it's undervalued because it requires innovation to unlock. Uh, that's why, in some ways, I actually you know dislike the the term management because um, because these treasuries kind of need to be unlocked, right? And and we actually need to build uh, you know new types of um, you know a- actions for these treasuries for them to be for for more of them more more of the treasury to be allocated and and spent. Um, it, it it does it require like more than just a um, uh, sort of copying of of uh, of how corporate treasuries work because in some ways they're similar but in, in a lot of ways they they're you know really different given the dynamics it does. Yeah, I mean definitely we and from a coin shift perspective where our initial product um, is mainly around payouts. Um, we're bringing out a more comprehensive solution that's going to involve a lot, a lot, of, a lot of other areas, some of which we'll probably touch on. Um, so following what Llama is doing uh, is critical for us as well, just to understand um, you know, things around budgeting, um, things around maybe accounting tax, um, uh, asset allocation. Uh, we talk about diversification. So um, everything you're doing, it's like you said, it's, it's not just copying uh, from traditional finance. Although there are some similar elements, um, it really is building out something completely new and relevant for the Web3 space, uh, which I've said Lama seems to be really at the forefront of that. So I guess we, we, we spoke about kind of having a best practice for DAOs. And you're working with a lot of different, uh, a lot of different um, DAOs yourself, obviously, mainly the larger ones. When you come in for the first time, do you kind of have your own structure that says, okay, let's do our own evaluation of where they are today? And if you could just kind of walk us through at a high level what you're looking at to kind of evaluate um, uh, a DAO uh, as far as how they're um, handling their, their treasury. So I guess this really gets into what is best practice in your view. Yeah, um, I think the the first thing is that the treasury is just a, um, it, it's just a medium to sort of grow uh, the DAO, and, and so in, in the sense that there is a goal, which is the DAO needs to accomplish some of its key KPIs. It needs to um, it needs to grow. It needs to survive. It needs to thrive. It needs to pay contributors, grow users, um, grow revenue. You know, sort of things like that, and and, and be and have longevity uh, exist for hundreds of years, um, and 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 fund whatever it, it values funding, and so. Uh, the the specifics sort of really differ DAO to DAO, um, but the 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 treasury we sort of you know really be the treasury is, um, you know it should serve the the needs of the DAO. And so the the first thing, for example, with with Aave that we put out was a um, a sort of Aave you know treasury vision doc, and and that sort of stated what the goals of of Aave broadly were and how um, the treasury can help accomplish that and like what types of things um you know broad, broadly fit within that that mandate and maybe what what wouldn't um the, the thing we do kind of next is is um you know kind of a broad risk um management framework and so that would be um you know you generally don't want uh you know say uh say 99 percent of the treasury in this really liquid uh native in this really liquid token or you don't um um, you know, you, you sort of want the, the um, uh, treasury to, yeah, say, have, uh, you know, two to four years of, of uh, stable coins to, you know, pay critical expenses. And, and these DAOs are really, like over the last year, actually, um, you know, DAOs are spending actually much more. And, and I know that, you know, CoinShift is, uh, is well aware of that because you guys are powering a lot of payments. Um, and, and I think as DAOs spend more, like the first, for the large protocol DAOs, the first unlock has been these grants programs. But... Uh, but eventually there'll be there'll be more such unlocks and and uh, but as these treasuries spend more like uh they should probably have stable assets um because um because you know if if there's a market drawdown if there's um you know generally if, if you want to you know pay contributors it, it's sort of good to have um you know stables in the treasury to um to, to sort of be able to fund that so second i'd say is a, is a risk management portion and then and the third is the implementation of specific strategies and so um in a way that you know to, to do it in sort of a you know DeFi native way, um, you'd want to think through how you can um, say you know achieve a particular objective, say you know uh, diversify into stable coins, or earn yield, uh, or, um, or or sort of accrue this other asset through a token swap, but um, in a way that again furthers the goals of the DAO. And so one proposal we have 
with Aave is uh, depositing A tokens into these uh, balance of E2 pools. Um, and, and you know, you want additional yield for these A tokens. But also, um, you accrue meta governance power in, in balance. And Aave has a close relationship with balance. And so it sort of makes sense for Aave to slowly accrue more meta governance power and maybe build out that function with an Aave DAO. And so that's an example of, you know, what an action would be that fits within the broad goals of Aave. Um, and and can expand sort of obvious influence in the in the DeFi ecosystem, uh, but 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 accomplish some of the you know investment type goals, which is you know you sort of earn additional yield, you um, yeah you, you sort of execute that fully um, on chain and trustlessly, which I think is another big component of of how we sort of go about things. Like we want to be as DeFi and DAO native as possible, and so um, any of these actions we take, um, we want it to be on-chain and trustless um, and executed via smart contracts. And so we we kind of um, generally move away from kind of the more, uh, uh, you know, uh, OTC or KYC things like we, you know, like this, the ecosystem of ours. And so we might do that at some point, but we, we typically prefer actions that are, um, say, continuous, uh, you know, can, can be open, done by a mechanism that is uh, DeFi native and, um, and that minimizes the risk or control in the hands of any one player. And so, um, you know, we, we kind of um, generally want to limit, uh, you know, people's, individuals' ability to say, you know, transfer treasury funds to their own address or something like that. Um, and I think that it's important to have systems that, um, that, that allow for DAOs to operate within a constrained sandbox uh, when they're allocating the treasury. The, um, yeah, a lot of, lot of things, a lot of questions from that. Um, so diversification clearly uh, is a major topic. So um, let's jump into that. Before I do, though, just one question and, and more general, which is you've been doing this for some time. You're working with a lot of the major um, uh, DAOs, clearly. Uh, just the state of the treasury market today um, compared to, say, a year ago, um, we're going to talk about diversification, for example. Has that, uh, has the situation there improved? Um, the general overall you know, professional management, if you will, of treasuries, has that noticeably uh, improved? Or just kind of the big trends, what have you seen over the past, say, 12, you know, 18 months? Good question. I think, one, there's more attention to treasuries. I think when I first started off, no one really valued that this was an important thing, and that includes people building products that includes um, resources within the DAO, um, you know, general attention of, of the DeFi market and things like that. Um, and so now I think it's it's very clear that, you know, there's um, you know, probably 15 plus billion dollars in some of the uh, top 50 treasuries. Uh, that's that's a lot of a uh, lot of capital. And this is even probably after the market drawdown. And so it was, it was probably much higher before. There's um, that, you know, if you if you think that more complex activity is going to happen in, an, in a digital native way and more of that activity needs to be coordinated in a digital native way, digitally native way, then y you would, you know, naturally think that DAOs will, will grow in, in number as well as size. And, and so these treasuries will eventually be uh, hundreds of billions of dollars or trillions of dollars, um, uh, you know, in, in, in the span of uh, 10 plus years. And so, so, so one, like the size of treasuries have grown. Uh, two, uh, spending has increased. And so uh, if you think about um, like spending, say, a year to two years back, um, it was uh, definitely two years back, it was, it was hardly anything from the large, I'm thinking about the, about the you know top 10 or 20 protocol DAOs, maybe MakerDAO is, is one exception, but they, they actually had a bunch of you know spending right from the DAO through these working groups. Uh, but, but yeah, a, a lot of other DAOs didn't have, uh, didn't really have spending uh, versus now, um, you know, swap Aave, Compound, DYDX, pool together, all have grants programs funded by the Treasury. Um, Index Coop, Yearn, Gitcoin, Maker, all have internal working groups and pay contributors from the Treasury. By rough estimates, you know, these these DAOs, just these DAOs alone, like you know, spend over hundred million dollars um, a year combined in, in native tokens, and and that includes um, spending on liquidity uh, campaign, li liquidity mining campaigns, um, and and so. That I'd say is a is a big difference versus um, versus last year, two years back, and and that again justifies the need to have stable coins a again because spending is clearly increased significantly, and you kind of need to have stable assets if you want to 
continue spending in the same rate. I think liquidity provisioning has has uh, evolved uh, uh, over time, and um, you know you had traditional liquidity mining be um, be kind of, you know powered by Compound initially, and then and then Aave and a bunch of other protocols. And I think now with the DeFi two point oh stack um, with with um, Fay Protocol, Ondo Finance, Tokamak, Olympus Pro, um, you just have more options of of um, you know things beyond. Um, uh, traditional liquidity mining, whether that's liquidity as a service, which um, which Fee and Ondo does, or that's uh, protocol on liquidity powered by uh, Olympus Pro, and, and so I think that is another big uh, development. And so there's there's this possibility that, that the treasury will have a bunch of LP tokens, um, and there's a way then you need to use to deploy those LP tokens. Well then. Just to jump right in more into more detail around diverse and diversification, clearly it's one of the, one of the main areas. Um, just that topic in general first, how has that changed over the, over the past year? Are more protocols now aware of, aware of the need to, to diversify and has that happened? Or uh, I remember a Masari report, uh, a little bit dated now, saying that really not much has changed. So that was that was uh, maybe over six months ago. So, um, what you know, what is your take on, I guess, the recogni- the recognition that diversification is is a huge uh, issue within Dow Treasuries today? I think still the top ten to twenty protocols are extremely concentrated in their native token. They have over ninety ninety five percent of their treasury balance in native tokens. So the problem hasn't. The, the the problem has uh, been recognized now, but I think uh, the solutions are kind of still required and, and pretty much like what we're heads down working on now. And it seems like a simple problem. It seems like you have native tokens, just sell them and get stable kinds, uh, get USDC or DAI. Um, the problem is to do it in a DeFi DAO native way, um, uh, there's uh, there's unique things that, that a DAO, um, that, that, that a DAO kind of experiences versus uh, versus say a DeFi user that is just um, you know selling these tokens on Uniswap, and a few of those problems are DAOs are public, and um, and operate through an on-chain governance system, and so any action you take, um, you if you want to do it on-chain and you want to sort of have it public or have have it go through a governance vote, then you do risk. Um, uh, chances of front running, chances of getting uh, sandwiched due to MEV. There's all these other risks that um, are hard versus if you were just executing a um, off-chain OTC trade. And the second one is that it is um, like DAOs are generally um, uh, larger, and so if if Uniswap is uh, is is doing a um, a treasury diversification, it probably, you know, um, ideally should be at the scale of say 70 to $100 million of uni tokens and just stable coins. And executing that on a index is going to have a lot of slippage. And so how do you do that um, uh, in a in a way that does get efficient execution, as well as make sure that the uni tokens aren't in the hands of mercenaries who immediately dump uni. So. Um, so you can get into how you know how you can potentially approach that, right? You can, you can say, um, uh, you know, you, you can sort of approach it uh, via broadly equity. So that that is selling the native tokens for stable coins. Um, and how do you do it by equity? So you, you can, um, you know, do it on a dex. You can do it by OTC or market makers. Um, you can do it do it by batch auctions on on Gnosis. So what batch auctions do is they match limit orders of, of buyers and sellers um, with basically the same clearing price for all participants. And Gnosis has, has powered this. And you can additionally maybe uh, KYC the, the participants on uh, on Fireblocks. Um, you can do it via, via bonding curves, uh, which, you know, balance the powers. And so th- there's, there's sort of ways to maybe get rid of the uni tokens and get stable kinds. Uh, or you can, um, you can do it via a strategic raise. And so um, so Lido pool together, um, FWB, uh, Forefront, as, as some DAOs that have done a, a DAO native strategic raise where they've, um, they, they've executed the sale of, of, uh, 
uh, native tokens for stable coins uh, and the native tokens have gone to VCs or other other DAOs or, or DAO contributors and uh, they've been vested over um, I think the typical term is probably two years uh, so so you know one year cliff plus a one year linear vesting that's monthly um, so those are a few options that you, you could sort of go about um, in terms of selling the, the token I think um, the other option is borrowing against native tokens uh, and this is a pretty unexplored. I would say both generally are unexplored. Um, you know, hardly any DAOs have ever really done these things, um, especially the larger ones. But yeah, the, the borrowing thing, you know, you can you can say borrow variable rate debt, so you can borrow stable coins against RV and Compound if if your your protocol is listed there, and you can um, you know you, you can sort of get stables temporarily. I, I think. You know the the risks are that your know, rates may spike depending on market conditions, and and the DAO actually has to manage the quotation risk, which which can be challenging. I think you can borrow fixed rate debt, so you can you can basically you know say deposit your collateral on on Element or Yield or Notional and um, borrow stable coins against that, um, or you can maybe access a secure line of credit, um, and uh, and that this is an interesting solution because you can um, say model out exactly what you need the stable coins for so you want to fund a six month liquidity program and you want to fund a um a protocol acquisition and then you can you can sort of borrow stables for funding that specific thing um uh, again this uh yeah this is unexplored but I, I think this is this is definitely interesting um and the third one maybe is a bond issuance so maybe you um you know you, you could sort of uh um explore like an under collateralized bond or you could still keep over collateralization, which is how most of uh, DeFi works, the Albion compound, and and you can um, you can basically have DAOs put their native tokens into um, maybe a separate collateral contract, and then borrow um, uh, stable coins, uh, you know, do do a bond issuance against that pool, and uh, and have some terms and conditions where uh, you know at a certain price you um, you know it's part of that. That collateral contract will get liquidated. Um, so th those are you know few uh, few potential ideas. I, I think um, you know I, I outlined this because uh, it just shows that it, it's um, it, it is to to do it well. Like it, it is um, more challenging than if a an individual um, was executing just a you know swap of of a governance token for a stablecoin. Uh, given the the nature that DAOs are public and open DAOs are, um, uh, you know, operate a much larger size, say 50, $100 million trades. Um, and DAOs can be, um, uh, you know, can have a little inaction, uh, operate through on-chain governance can be a little more risk of us. And so, you know, th those are a few considerations. And and, and, it, and it, it is, it, the coordination cost to do an action like this um, is it, it is a lot. Like to do a 70 to $100 million um, diversification for, for Uniswap DAO, like will take a lot of coordination cost. and. And so you want the action to not just be discrete. Ideally, the action should be continuous. So you know, Uniswap always has two to four years of operating expenses in stablecoins rather than you know just be a one-off thing. Yeah, another interesting option. I think this is probably similar to to batch au auctions. One um, one of our partners, Superfluid, who I'm sure you're very aware of, works with um, Ricochet Exchange, and they do basically kind of a, a streaming, if you will. Uh, release of their own token. So instead of um, you know one large batch, it's done continuously over a fixed time, a fixed amount typically. I just I thought that was a very interesting kind of Web3 way to um, diversify. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, Superfluid is doing awesome work. And um, yeah, exactly. I think I think uh, having a stream of, of stable coins um, approve over a period of time, um, whether that's... Um, yeah, via sort of a uh, debt issuance or something else, like is definitely, um, yeah, it is definitely a decent option. So lots of options. Obviously, one size doesn't fit all, and a lot of the work you do, I assume, is you you get into the into the protocol itself and you understand what you know uh, what probably best fits fits their needs and with the community clearly. Um, I'm curious though, kind of in the background, which hasn't been spoken about yet, is this is the issue of regulation. Um, you know, we talk about DAOs releasing tokens, uh, and the different ways you can do it. Uh, is that something you're, you are, 
working with um, as well on the, on your projects is helping them understand, I guess, the potential legal issues around this. And I re again, I realize this is a completely kind of wide open space right right now. But how important is that? Is that something that's coming up a lot as as you talk to these protocols about how to diversify their treasuries? Yeah, we definitely take it very seriously. So before we put up any treasury proposal, actually, we do consult with the lawyer and understand some of the legal risks and how we can mitigate that. Sometimes it's a question of language we use. Sometimes sometimes we scrap the project if, if there is a legal, substantial legal risk. Um, or we, um, yeah, or, or we change the, the design of, of the solution. Uh, I think legal is quite an important part of the product creation process itself. And so um, we do have like, you know, a role that we can take um, is uh, you know, like a, an emerging sort of lead market leader in space where we, we can be proactive about, um, you know, how to do this in a way that is not just efficient and effective, but also legally compliant. And we do take that seriously. And so what um, that could involve is, you know, and sometimes you know, we, for example, if, if we're building something like it's, uh, you know, things are going to be non-custodial. Um, I think if, um, if we're executing certain actions, you kind of, kind of want to limit uh, the chance that you know someone uh, you know m misuses um, their delegated authority, and so there's there's always a constrained sandbox that that people operate in where they can they can only make delegated decisions, uh, but only of a certain type. You can't you can't send uh, sort of governance tokens to your personal address. You can only send it to uh, these set of um, smart contracts that. Uh, you know, are, are, are built and audited and, and verified and, and serve a particular function, like like executing a, um, uh, a, a debt diversification. Um, and um, and I think the the other portion is taxes. And so you know, how when you when you sort of do one of these diversifications, what are the tax implications of that? Like one way to go about it is is you know, th there's no clarity right now of, of how you do taxes, given that. Does are global. Um, there, there isn't even like you know sort of specific country regulation that that makes this clear. Like these, like fully on-chain entities uh, kind of exist in the ether. Right? Like they, they're not um, they're, they're not registered in in particular places. And so, um, so how you do taxes is sort of interesting. Like maybe one solution temporarily is to set aside a, a separate sort of tax reserve pool that um, that you know you, you sort of estimate potentially what the tax implications are and you, you set aside that. Um, not, not always recommend this, this is a solution, but that, that's just one potential thing. Um, I think, um, uh, you know, the other ones are you want to do actions that, you know, like don't, for whatever reason, make the token be considered a security. You um, want to take actions that um, don't increase any risk or liability for individual contributors who make those proposals. Um, so those are a few considerations, but um, I think uh, in general, we definitely take it seriously. I think the, um, you know, we, we hope to participate in like some of these legal discussions when, when, um, when, you know, people are, uh, when these things are drafted up, because um, yeah, I think, I think we, um, yeah, as, as a space journey, you know, DAOs should be kind of opinionated on, um, you know, making sure that, that, uh, um, you know, we do things the right way, um, and and also um, don't stifle sort of innovation and and um, and just the general exploration in the space. So I want to talk a little bit about how to actually, um, as a DAO, to to implement this. You know, the the people who are involved. Um, but before that, uh, maybe I should pause a bit. Uh, Sukanchi, are there any questions now for Shriyas? Because We've covered a lot of information. Yeah. Just curious if, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, please, you can raise yes. your hand if you have a question. Yeah, I'll add if there is someone as a speaker, but not right now. Okay. All right. So I'll just keep moving on. So, yeah, we've got, we talked about, you know, what is best practice? A key area is diversification. You've walked us through some of the, some of the, the type of diversification. Um, what about actually the the people who have to make it happen? Um, because just for a lot of the discussions we're having, that seems to be one of the blockers, uh, just how the DAO is structured, how it's organized, how we can actually devise, get approval, implement. Um, 
you know, treasury related, uh, you know, policies. So what, how do you view that? Um, what do you consider as almost best practice there? Um, for example, working groups or, you know, professional management or whatever. I'm just kind of curious um, what you're seeing and, 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 and what you think is the, the proper way kind of to structure things now. I think the Llama solution is, um, has, uh, as yeah, I think a, a quite a, quite a good one, um, which is, um, you can kind of think of, of Llama as a, um, yeah, a group really, uh, focused on, uh, treasury allocations for DAOs. And so, um, we both, you know, can su supply the, uh, sort of the, you know, the, the software and the smart contracts to do it as well as the, the people and the experts to do it efficiently and one of the goals at Elama is to yeah make sure we reduce the coordination costs in these DAOs to get an action done. For example, we're we're working on a, a Gitcoin fifteen million dollar treasury diversification and so we don't just um uh you know supply like you know top contributors to, to work on that treasury diversification, but also write the smart contracts to kind of implement that diversification. Um which is, you know, an exchange of GT GTC tokens uh for stable coins, whitelisting of the partners that participate. Uh, vesting or uh, locking of the tokens for say one to two years, um, I think the and, and so the way you know, we'd work is is you know we we sort of ha would have um, you know a set of of, um, uh, of 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 potential strategies that that the DAOs can allocate to and and we kind of will will come in and and um, uh, you know sort of propose that that you know the the llama contributors will. Um, have some some delegated authority to uh, allocate to just these strategies, but but not not anything else because nothing else has been uh, already approved by on chain governance. And so that that I think is an effective mechanism where you have a, a specialized group like these these things. Not all DAOs should build internal expertise. I think uh, to do some of these things, um, some DAOs will, uh, and and some actions should have internal expertise. But I think an action like diversifying a treasury via Say a convertible bond issuance, um, it, you know, it's kind of like uh, it, it. It is a. It's an action that like Llama can have multiple reps at, and we can get really good at it. Um, and and you know, you can view Llama as this composable DAO within Aave or within another DAO, and and uh, and you know, we can really, really you know, get, get good at it, execute it better probably than um, uh, you know, th than sort of setting up a working group internally. Uh, but but honestly, a Llama working group is like a working group internally because we will pretty much be contributors and members of, of another, uh, you know, of another DAO. Um, I think the other, the other thing is to, of course, have like treasury working groups. And so we, uh, we have formed treasury working groups that pull together and, um, and Gitcoin and, and few other DAOs. And, um, I think, um, that's also, I think a very effective solution. The treasury working group can either be advisory. Um, so it's just, you know, you just, you just sort of these experts that advise the DAO on, on how to do certain things. Um, or they can be, um, they can have delegated authority to execute these actions. Um, in which case, maybe you know you have to really think about um, what actions do they have delegated authority to execute. Uh, how do you constrain um, what they can do uh, to to make sure it's not just an open white space where they can do anything. But um, but yeah, in the working group model, I, I would say that um, you know you you basically have certain individuals that are experts that I think actually. For, for for things like like budgeting and payroll and um, and general management of of the DAO's budget, general management of, um, uh, I'd say um, allocation to internal working groups. I think those things should definitely be in like an internal working group managing it. I think for actions that are of a, of a that requires some financial sophistication, it depends on the DAO. Maybe there's there's DAOs like Maker or Index Corp that can have internal groups that sort of do this. Uh, but then I think there could be um, there could be uh, other DAOs that uh, you know don't want to focus on this and they want to focus on their product and they want to focus on funding public goods in Gitcoin's case. In which case, um, it, it is good to have you know some some delegated authority maybe to uh, to a you know a group or a community that's that's really aligned with the DAO. Um, and so yeah, I've covered kind of yeah you know and um, kind of the Llama solution, the working groups. I see a third one is of course automation, and so you know you definitely want to automate what you can, and then have you know humans do the rest. And so uh, the um, the automation component is is of um, 
you know, say you execute these some actions repeatedly, and then you just want to you know set those sort of set and forget. Um, maybe you know always um, sort of if if there's um, if, if there's savers in the treasury, they deployed in this particular strategy. I think there's a certain extent to which you can automate those things. I think what you can autom- what you can build uh, by software is like exactly what the strategies are. Uh, exactly, you know, in a way that mitigates smart contract risk and, and uh, other risk, but um, but the specific allocation to these strategies probably requires um, you know, some some input based on market conditions and other things. Uh, but that input can be suggested again by um, recommend by, by some sort of recommendation engine. And so, um, so yeah, th- those are like three lenses that I'd look at this in. Um, uh, I think the other component, which maybe I didn't cover in the previous one, is is revenue. Um, and so, you know, definitely a way that you know, besides like taking an action to diversify a native token, stablecoins definitely a way you can generally um, earn stablecoins is to have revenue in stables. And so, um, so you know, and, and revenue is definitely critical to the you know, DAO core team and and the and the product and and the community. And so, uh, that is something I think internally that folks can work out to make sure that the the revenue sources are. Um, you know, can can come maybe from a from an asset that's not their native token. Yeah, I would imagine um, as we evolve a bit, uh, the more successful DAOs will be almost by definition earning um, earning revenue. Clearly, that's why they're successful, and it'll be in various tokens, uh, including stables. And probably the best way to diversify is just simply to earn um, and build your treasury out. Uh, let's say natively by by earning those tokens. Completely agree. Um, the um, I'm curious though. One of the things because you, you, I think you nicely kind of summarized the options of managing the treasury. Um, the amount of money we're talking about, which seems huge, uh, for some of the larger ones. Do you think it's inevitable? I think I think Jacob from from Lido Finance a couple of weeks ago made this point on our AMA. He tended to agree, but do you think it's inevitable that all of the major DAOs will eventually have their own professionally managed kind of treasury team? Uh, um, or do you think it's something that will always be kind of a work in progress where you have a community, people coming in and out and working groups forming and dissolving? It's a good and interesting question. I think um, I'm open-minded on this. I think there's some actions for which I think there should be an internal treasury working group. It, it, it's a question of what the what the internal group does and what the I, I, I'm using internal and external, but I think even the, the the true external groups will feel like DAO contributors, right? Like I, I think um, I think when you say external, uh, you know, you you can like I I don't view Lama as external to Ave. Like we're we're sort of Lama the Lama contributors in Lama and Ave are are pretty much the main contributors for Ave DAO. Um, you know, uh, there's there's few. You know, I am involved, and, and few others are, and and uh, we are kind of the main contributors for Avida, and so we we were sort of very integral to to Avida, I think, um, and and so Lama is integral too. So so I think when we say first external, it's um, they are going to be extremely important DAO contributors. They just have to participate in a way that's more DAO native. I, th- I think DAO to DAO relationships are a little more fluid um, than strict. I think. You operate in in this area of transparency um, versus uh, versus say you know a, a, you know a company that's especially in the treasury function maybe there's some functions you can have extremely proprietary sort of software but um, but I think in the treasury function you want to be fairly transparent um, but yeah to, to your question of um, the internal versus external uh, professionally managed teams I think there'll be both um, it, it's just the, what what both teams do right so for example um, I don't think it makes sense for a tech company to uh, have a team uh, internally to execute an IPO, um, and and I can't think of a tech company that's uh, that that has a team that's done. There's probably some some companies. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think Google probably did it themselves. Um, but 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 most companies sort of go through Goldman or, or J.P. Morgan or uh, Morgan Stanley to to do it. And and the reason is um, an IPO is sort of a one-off thing. Uh, it requires sort of specific. Um, uh, your specific set of, uh, of you know, sort of finding some buyers, like uh, executing, uh, you know, a lot of legal work, and and Goldman is has had like you know thousands of reps on this, um, and it makes sense to to pay a fee and and have Goldman do this, and so, um, so I think there's there's a bunch of actions that a DAO will take. There'll be one off for the DAO, but there'll be repetitive actions for another group, um, 
and and for those actions, I think it makes sense for another group um, like Lama to execute on them. Uh, I think for actions that are repetitive for the DAO, and I think definitely payments and, and budgeting and, and those things are going to be repetitive for the DAO, and probably some some um, allocation type actions. And for those, I think it does make sense for the for the DAO to um, uh, to, to have that function internally. But if you think of something like a fade Adi merger proposal, um, you know it, it does make sense for 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 Faye and, and Roddy to to sort of uh, have that you know fully internally set up right that that group for whether they should do a merger or not because it's um and the group that's actually executing the merger because uh, it's really going to happen. Faye and Roddy should just focus on building their protocol um, and paying contributors. Uh, but but you know the. the that type of proposal is is a is a one off thing. So, I phrase it as um, what increases. Uh, it's 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 the uh, it's like the cost theorem uh, of the you know, theory of the firm, which is um, you know why do firms exist? Why 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 doesn't everyone just be an individual contractor? And and uh, and it boils down to kind of coordination costs. And so some things for which um, you know the the DAO can execute internally because it actually reduces the coordination and transaction costs. I guess of getting it done. Uh, and there's some things where you know the the DAO should actually um, uh, employ someone externally, or you know ha- ha- have have someone else who, who's an expert do it. Um, and it boils down again like coordination and transaction costs. Yeah, great point as well on the the difference between an ex- internal and external in within Web three, because I think we're all many of us are participating on multiple DAOs. And you're right, I certainly don't feel external to say Ava, which I think many of us are involved in in some capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the old definitions really don't apply. Um, and I always think there will be the need, as you said, for, for certain uh, expertise, especially in areas that are not so repeatable, without a doubt. Um, the, one of the things I saw that, that Lama has done recently, which was super interesting, and it kind of nicely plays into what we hope to do with our with our v2 which is to bring a lot more transparency into our treasuries was you have an ethics policy and i'm wondering because when we talk about treasuries we talk about people managing money um and things aren't always so clear sometimes within within crypto how um the ethics policy that you have maybe how did that come about why did you think there was a need and is this something you're also talking to other DAOs about to kind of implement as part of the way they manage their treasuries themselves? Yeah, I think um, you know we really view the the trust that the DAOs place in us as as um, is something we don't take lightly. And and I think um, we've been very intentional about onboarding Lama contributors. We're very intentional about uh, you know interviewing folks and and you know getting it through. Um, and, you know, add, adding people who have not just great skill sets aligned with our values um, and, you know, just, just are in it for, for the, for the right reasons. So, so one, I think, you know, we, we kind of have the, um, I, I think with the community we have, like there's, there's full trust in, in them operating, you know, in, in their best interest and Lama's best interest um, in a way that if any of their actions were publicly revealed, like they, they would be fine with it. And I, I've, I, I know all, all, all the Lama contributors as well, and and um, and you know I, I sort of trust that that, that is the case. Uh, having said that, like it, it always makes sense to have um, some policy in place, uh, especially for some areas that maybe are a little nebulous. And so, uh, the one that we put in place is is specifically around um, around trading of certain tokens when we're doing work with some DAOs. And so this doesn't apply to every case. Like I think. You know, in most cases, like um, we're working in public and we're working on governance forums, and there's really nothing that um, you know can constitute uh, uh, you know privileged information that we have. But there are some cases, you know, if if, if we're working on a, in a particular proposal and and in some discussion, it, it comes up that you know we do have some information be that that is is material non-public that can potentially move token prices uh, before it's made public. Uh, we want to flag that internally, and and so we have a a do not trade list, um, and uh, and any anyone uh, you know should bring up um, uh, a, you know a, a token that qualifies that material non public information category. And llamas can't t- trade related governance tokens. Uh, there's also a policy on front running, um, which is you know we shouldn't front run a transaction that results from our DAO engagement. Uh, it also applies to 
governance votes. And so if, if Lama is the, if there's a new uni proposal and, you know, Lama has um, 500,000 uh, uni tokens delegated to us uh, and, you know, we're the deciding vote on, on the proposal and that proposal could probably move the needle on, on uni's price. Uh, and this, you know, this we have a meta governance function internally where we, you know, we, we decide internally how to vote in a proposal. Like, we shouldn't probably act on that. Uh, we shouldn't, like, no Lama contributor should probably trade uni um, during that period because because we know something before we're voted. I think after we're voted, after the, the proposal is passed, like that, that's different. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so we maintain this in our trade list. Um, and so right now that includes... Uh, CBX, given that, you know, we're working on listing the asset on Aave, uh, GTC, given that we're working on the treasury diversification proposal. <coughs> but, you know, we'll, we'll, we sort of restate this every week during our weekly meeting. And then we also just update the list every, um, uh, yeah, a, a, as soon as um, something comes to my or, um, or uh, one of our attention. And so I'd say um, the general... Um, we want to minimize the, the the number of policies we have, but like the the, the policies we have, we want to take it really uh, seriously and strictly. Like in, in general, the idea is just that people operate in Lama's best interest. But I, I think there are some some things we want to be quite quite strict on, and and we never want to lose the 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 trust internally among uh, our contributors, but also um, with with DAOs. And, um, and I think something like this is um, you know definitely makes sense. And and the reason we we've had this policy for a while, but the reason we wanted to share in public was one so you know pe um pe people know this exists uh and also um uh to get feedback I, I think um it's still early like we're, we're still learning and so if if there are things that um you know people think we, we should add or if there's if there's edits to how we're doing this um you know definitely uh love to hear that and and uh, yeah a lot of people have, have reached out uh to to me and, and said you know this is uh, something a step in the right direction that um that this is something they're considering implementing in the in their DAO as well, and so um, yeah, it's definitely sort of good to hear and good good if we can if we can move move the um, th this type of policy you know to to the DAO space uh, broadly because because um, uh, it's um, it's not a question of enforcement, uh, it's more a question of um, sort of the principles and and I think um, you know we, we, as long as you have the right people, we we can sort of trust that people operate at the right principles. Yeah, it's nice that Web3, it, it is all a work in progress. We're all just, um, you know, trying to to create um, interesting things as we go and get feedback. So I love the approach. I think from our side with V2, we're certainly trying to build in things like um, clearly listing all of the safes that are uh, under the control of a DAO. So, so community members can know this is the entire treasury uh, as defined um, uh, by our community. And also, um, you know, who are the multi-signers on each safe, right? Making sure that's very transparent. Um, we've had some recent cases where there were some surprises about maybe what was really part of the treasury and what was not, and who had the signing authority on, 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 on those funds. So something we hope to make more transparent um, with, our, with our V2. Um, I've used up the hour. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, Sukanchi, are there any questions? Maybe just we have time maybe for one uh, quickly if anyone has one. If not. Yeah, like we have someone. Oh, okay. If you don't mind, Trias, we can just perhaps yes, take this. Uh, fantastic. Um, I think like, yeah. Please go ahead. I don't know what's the name. Yeah, I think you just have to unmute and then you can ask your question. C O X Y. Oh, oxygen. Um, oxygen. Hey. <laughs> hey. Um, <clears throat> so I'm kind of new to the DAO space. We are. Oh, it still so shows listener. Um, do you need to make them a speaker, Sukanch? Oh, he. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, he's on it. He's speaking. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, there's uh, there's been a lot going on with this this space. I don't know what happened. I think I got rugged twice already. But um, so we're kind of new to the space. We're trying to develop a DAO. Um, Oxygen's currently a, a corporation, but we're we're also supporting the DAO, um, like a DAO structure, to kind of move into the community space with what what we're what our efforts are. Um, but I don't want to take too much time. I just want to know, like, where's the best place to look at 
the information on how to get these things set up and what, like, um, hello. Can you hear me? Hey, yes, I can hear. You. Okay. Um, like, where's the best space? So, any more, any more speakers? I'm not, yeah. If someone has a question, we can ask it now. But if not, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to end. Yeah, I'm, I'm able to hear the the question. I, I can quickly answer it. Um, I think the um, yeah, I, I would say you know first I, I, I would sort of start with um, what the goal of what you're trying to build is, uh, whether it's a it's a product or a service that the community get the right people to join. Um, I would be quite intentional about who the the first five people are, who the first thirty people are. Um, quite intentional about sort of community design and uh, you know you want to make sure you, you have uh, people who align with your mission and values. Like there's like no one at Nama who's, who I describe as like a, you know, one token type of person. And uh, it depends on what exactly you want to build, but, um, but you know, it's, it's best to be intentional about that. And I think I, I would place that first and then, and then everything else after in terms of like the DAO and like how, how, how the, you know, the, the more formal mechanisms, for example, I think quite, quite simply, you can start with uh, a Gnosis safe plus, contributors on a discord. Um, and then from there, um, you sort of focus on, on what you're working towards. And then when it makes sense, you introduce um, uh, another um, layer on top, you, you introduce say, off chain voting on snapshot. Uh, and then after that, you, you could sort of um, you know, explore a token, explore on chain governance. Uh, but I just wouldn't, um, you know, I, I wouldn't rush on, 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 on formalizing making the structures too rigid before you can really encourage the fluidity of the DAO. Like what, what DAOs really enable is is this fluid contribution and collaboration. And so you want to maximize that in the in the early days, um, and then and then really you know a, a everything else sort of comes from there. And so um, so you know I, I I would sort of you know not really worry about about the treasury or any of these or, or like on chain governance, any of these other mechanisms. But I, I would just in terms of getting set up, I would just uh, get the right people, get a discard. And set up a Gnosis safe, um, and and probably put ha have some ether or USDC in there, and that should be it. Um, and and then you can you can get going and building, and then um, yeah, a a and from there you can sort of um, see when it makes sense to introduce the uh, the you know uh, token or on chain governance or something else. Okay, um, can you can you also Excellent. maybe sorry I, um, point us in a direction of where to gain? Um, are there are there any others? Pray.eth pray is, uh, I think, getting wrecked. Um, but he's, uh, um, yeah, he's he's just asking a question. So I, I, I don't think you can hear it, but I can I can take it. Got it. So I, is I, there another like where like can you point us in a direction to kind of keep on track? We have um like I said we have a C corp. The we're in a public good alignment with um like conservation. Um, we've developed like a new product for the NFT space, but we. We want the DAO to be involved in the community efforts to kind of supporting the projects on the ground, and like, how do what what's the best place to be aligned with like communities that are willing to kind of develop like this type of project? Like, is there anything specific for those? Like, I, I, I this might not even be the right space. Like I said, I've been having a lot of <laughs> personal problems trying to find the DAO and navigate the DAO space. So, uh, maybe yeah, like maybe maybe. I would need more specific, so maybe you can uh, just DM me, and then um, we can I, I can try to get back to you um, and and see what what can be helpful. Okay, awesome, appreciate you. Yeah, uh, great. Yeah, it was, it was great chatting, everyone. Um, thanks a lot, and and this was um, yeah, it, it was sort of great getting introduced. And I, I um, yeah, I also have to just shout out like I've, I've told Tarun this before, but really respect with. Concept has has built, and um, you know, look forward to working together. <laughs> Thanks, Rios. Thanks again for joining us. Um, we'll have the recordings on Twitter and in Discord. Um, and uh, you know, have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Rios. Thanks, everyone, for joining.